Now, let's look at this from God's perspective. If we rub out all of that, and we call that God's creation, which is the universe. And the universe has existed for how long? Well, at the moment, they think for around, any ideas? Well, they feel around anywhere from 3 to 15 billion years at this point, right? right? Pretty hard to conceive that amount of time, isn't it? But anyway. And the universe contains a reflection of God's personality, attributes, energy, desires. So in other words, the universe has all of parts of God's attributes in it, including, of course, we are a part of this universe. So mankind or God's children are a part of this universe. But there are also animate and inanimate objects in this universe as well that are all part of God's creations. Planets, right? Solar systems, right? And trees, birds, animals, all sorts of things are all a part of God's creations. Now, if you rubbed out all of those creations, would God still exist? If God would still exist, then God is not the universe. It's quite simple to get that logically, isn't it? If you rub out all of the universe and God still exists, then it's obvious that God isn't the universe. But God's creation is the universe. Can you see the difference? And there are, is a part of God in the universe. In fact, there are literally thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of actually qualities, many of which I personally have yet to discover, that are in the universe that tell me things about God. So there is all sorts of God's nature in this universe, things that I'm yet to discover. And God's personality, attributes, energy, desires are all a part of this universe. And in fact, God existed before this universe ever existed. Because God is, see, there's a big difference between infinite and 15, 20, 15 billion years, isn't there? Right? That, that's like an ant compared to that in terms of time. And so, so we, off, we can see that straight away, God exists as a separate entity or being to the universe itself. But there'll be many uh, and all of God's personality, attributes, energy and desires in this universe. So I can discover quite a lot about God by actually interacting with this universe. I can actually even feel quite a lot of God's emotions by, activate, uh, by, act, by being in this activity with this universe. But is it better for me to ask the universe the question or God the question and get an answer? Will, will you think about it? If I have to ask the universe a question, what we have to do is we have to create what is now known as the scientific method. Right? And the scientific method is I create a series of experiments to investigate a certain issue and eventually these experiments will show me whether this issue is true or false or not. Assuming, of course, that I've created the experiments correctly. Right? And I have to use presuppositions from previous experiments that I found seem to work to create the new experiments to, create, to, to identify the new truth. Now that, that is quite a difficult process. That is the process of asking the universe the truth. The process of asking God the truth is longing for God's love to enter you and feeling God's emotions on the subject. And when you can feel God's emotions on the subject, you'll know the truth. You'll, you'll have God's answer about that truth. When you can feel God's emotions about that subject. Now that's a far better process, isn't it, of discovery of universal truth. Now, bearing that in mind, if I have a viewpoint that the creation, that this, in other words, is God, can you see it's going to be very, very difficult to, for me to have a personal relationship with this infinite being who is actually God? Because what I'm believing is God's creations are God rather than God herself being God. And if I have a false concept of God, how can I have a burning desire for God? 
Can you see straight away my concept of God is out of harmony with God's concept of God? And remember what we've said all the way along, that to have a relationship with God, I must have God's beliefs about herself. I must accept the truth about God inside of myself. And they are, the truths are, God's belief about herself. And she created this process, which I've been explaining to you over now many years, of uh, 2,000 years to be precise, and <laughs> of how to actually get to feel God's feelings. Does that make sense? And know the difference between asking God the question and asking the universe the question. So if you have a concept that God is the universe, my suggestion is for a period of time, three, six months or whatever, put aside that concept for a moment and focus instead on God being this infinite being, this entity that I can have a personal relationship with. And this infinite being, by the way, wants a personal relationship with you. In fact, this infinite being created you as an individual person different to every other being, every other human soul she created. So if you could leave this universe somehow, there would be a certain part of God's design that would be lost to the universe forever. Can you see that? Like if God created you specifically for a specific reason, then God, and God obviously wants a specific relationship with you. God wants a relationship with you. You have a part to play in God's universal plan. Uh, if you want to choose to take it. What's that movie that goes like that? Mission. Your mission, mission Impossible. That's what it is, yeah. Mission Impossible. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is. Every one of you have an individual mission that God has implanted in your soul. Every one of you. That's unique to you. No one else, no one else has it. No one else has it. It's going to be similar to some other people perhaps in different aspects, but there is something unique about you. Your personality, attributes and energy and desires are unique to God. God will miss you if you ever could get lost. Does that make sense? This is why in the first century I said a shepherd will go out and find the sheep that is left the flock and leave the hundred who are already in the flock and he'll go off and find the one. Because he, because he loves them all individually. right? And God is like that shepherd. God is like a person who actually loves all of, the pe all of his creations individually. He has an individual desire for you. And it's not a generalised desire. You see, the universe has laws and it has principles and it has all these other things which we could say generally apply to every individual, do they not? Well, that's not the kind of thing God wants with you. God has put all of those other things there should you choose to neglect the thing that God desires for you so that you can still have a loving, beautiful life in the end by living in the universe, ignoring God. So God has so much love for you that God has actually created a universe in which you can ignore God if you choose to and still have a lot of beautiful things happen in your life. That's how loving God is. But she also created this whole prospect of you having a relationship with her, the infinite being who created you. And she wants this relationship with all of her heart, if you could say such a thing. Does that make sense? She wants this with you. No one else will do. Because there's a specific thing she has going on with you that she can't have going on with any other person that is unique to you. Does that make sense? And so, so it's not just a generalised thing that God's talking about here with you. God wants this specific thing going on. Uh, qu uh, microphone, please. Uh, when you say individual mission, are you talking about the two halves of the soul? I'm talking about the whole soul, one soul, which, of which has two halves. That whole soul has an individual mission, yes. And you are one half of a soul, yep. And so therefore you are a one half part of that individual mission that is unique. And that's why it's so exciting to 
come together with our soulmate. Of course. <laughs> it's one of the most exciting things you are ever going to experience your entire life coming together with your soulmate. See, a lot of times we look at it and go, gee, I don't know about this coming together with your soulmate. Gee, it seems like a pretty emotional process. But it's actually the most amazing process you can go through your entire... It's the most amazing process I've personally been through aside from my connection with God, which is the most amazing. But aside from that, my relationship with soulmate is the most amazing process. Can you see how that will change my priorities in my day-to-day -day life. If I actually viewed my relationship with this being as the most important thing I could focus on my entire life, and then secondly, my relationship with that beautiful being over there, which actually happens to be the feminine half of me, and I, my, that is my second most important thing in my life, do you think I'd be worried about too many other things going on in my life? Not really, hey? You think we're going to worry about which house we're going to live in? Or, you know, whether we're going to sell this house, buy that one very much? Like, no, we're going to be focused firstly on those relationships and the happiness those relationships create within us. And then whatever we create as a result of those relationships is just going to be so overwhelmingly beautiful for both of us in our, in, or our soul, which is both of us, to share with God. That's how our life is designed. So while I'm trying to have a relationship with the universe, there's a lot I'm neglecting in this relationship here, you see. And you can't have a... De the universe is a power system. We can't have a burning desire for a power system in the end. But we can have a burning desire for the being who created it. And, and it's very important to understand that that being wants this very badly with you. Do you, you understand that? Like... She, she wants it more than anything else. More than All of her laws of her universe, actually, were created for you to experience this relationship with her. The highest laws of the universe, which are the laws of divine love, were all created just so you could have this relationship with her. The human soul, the pinnacle of her creation, has this ability to invoke all of these laws that are a part of the, her, the human soul's creation just to have a relationship with God. That's its entire, our entire purpose of all of those laws, just to have a relationship with you personally. You personally. You personally. Not, not generally, as a personal individual relationship. It's just like the kind of relationship you're going to have with your soulmate. That's how it's going to feel to you. Do you understand? It's not the kind of relationship, oh, you know, yeah, 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 there's hundreds of people out there and I love them all. It's not like that at all. It's not going to ever be like that with your relationship with God. When you come closer and closer to God, it's going to be like the relationship with your soulmate, but only more intense than that. that that's the kind of personal relationship God wants with you. And God is capable of having that with all of her children, simultaneously. And that will start to give you some kind of concept of how powerful God is to actually exchange these amazingly powerful emotions with every single one of her children without imitation. It's just an amazing thing to conceive, isn't it? Like, just an amazing thing to conceive. Um, can I... Someone over here has had their hand up for some time, though. Was it yourself? or There was someone over here who did have their hand up for some time. No? Let's go to Raya. Hey, Jay. Um, how, how did Jesus come into this? How, and did, how did I come into this? How did you come into this from there to there? And Can you explain that a little bit, please? I'm just another one of God's children, just like you are. Myself and Mary are one of God's children. We have unique attributes, just like you do. And what, or the only difference between myself and anyone else on the planet that's ever lived at this point is that I chose to activate those unique desires inside of me. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. And since I chose to activate it, I became the first true son of God as a result. Free will. And it was just because of my free will, I desired to activate it. Do, do you understand? Every single person can desire to activate these things. So I'm no special, more special to God than you are. Do, do you get that? More special. God, God wants a unique relationship with 
you, just like God wants a unique, unique relationship with me, and it is entirely dependent upon your passionate desire as to how far that relationship progresses. Entirely dependent upon only you as to how far this relationship goes. Now, you can long for a little bit of God's love, receive a little bit, and then get really resistive and hung up emotionally about these kind of emotions, and you can sit in that stagnant state for 30 years if you want, 50 years if you want, 100 years if you want, 200 years, 500 years, 1,000 years, 10,000 years if you want. Right? And it just means that you're not going to experience the joy that you would have experienced if you just allowed every emotion, every emotion had the passionate desire I had the passionate desire and that just kept building and building and building and you just allowed that to flow over just a period of a few years. You're going to be in a totally different space with God in that place and you will receive more of God's love, not because God loves you more, but because you allowed her to love you more. That's the only difference. Does that make sense? Peter, you got a question? Oh, oh sorry, we heard down the front here, sorry. sorry. Can we come down the front first? We, this lady had her hand up for sorry. some time. And then we'll go back up to Peter. Yep. I just wanted to ask AJ, I've got a bit of a problem at the moment with my relationship with God because I've, through the process of emotional release, I've gone to the core emotions of my existence mm -hmm. and was to, to my conception. There was more like a rape more than an act of love. Mm -hmm. And I'm feeling all those emotions. And also when I came out, my mum's... Um, I had the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck mm -hmm. and so I was nearly dying there because of the pain. Now I'm wondering and asking God, why would he have me created in the sixth sphere and having me then having to incarnate in this planet where the pain is so great? Mm -hmm. And all my life I can see it's been a consequence of all that pain mm -hmm. uh, that I've gone through. And only now through yourself I've finally found a way that I can connect with him. But I was wondering why would they have created me and then have him? We've got to be very careful that we understand the truth, that there are things that in this universe that God didn't create. So, so for example, if give you some examples. God only created the potential for hate. God didn't, by giving you free will, he created the potential for you to do anything, in fact. Right? But God didn't create hate itself. What created that was man's denial of a, quite a few grieving emotions with, and quite a lot of fears and then hatred got created out of the anger. That's what created it. So God didn't create a lot of the things we currently see on the planet. The problem that many of us have is we associate man's creation by walking away from God with God. We actually blame God for man's own creation. And what you're doing right now, to a large degree, is blaming God for man's creation. And that there is an emotion in that. So you go into the emotions of that. Because in the end, we need to, if we're going to release emotion, we need to realise who created this within us. And God never created any of these painful events that occur to us. He did create the, the ability for us to experience pain. Right? Because he gave us free will choice. And free will choice means that we can choose to do things disharmonious with love, which will always create pain. Right? And he gave us the ability for us to experience pain so that we could see that things were out of harmony with love. Right? But God never created the painful things itself. And this is the thing that we need to come to understand emotionally, is that actually most of the time what we're doing is we're associating God with all these very, very negative things that are really man and not God, that men have created on their own back. You see, in creating you as a free will individual, God created you with the capacity to create things out of harmony with God's love. That's what God did. He created you with the capacity to do it and created your forefathers with the capacity to do it and their forefathers with the capacity to do it and so forth. And many of us, multi-generationally, have just decided to not do things God's way and the result of that is always going to be pain. So we need to be very careful that we stop associating the pain we feel with God and start associating the pain we feel with the underlying emotional reason why the pain got created. And while I'm blaming God, I am actually avoiding the experience of why the pain got created. And this is something that many of us do on the planet. 
For example, there are many people, many of you in the audience, who have had a background experience in Christian religion, yes? How many have had a background experience in Christian religion? Yeah, probably half the audience. Okay. Now, now in, that, in that religious form, whatever that form took, there was often a lot of false beliefs that were, perpetu were perpetuated, yes? Okay. And those false beliefs came along with a lot of emotions. For example, how many of you have been involved in some kind of, uh, I mean, on the receiving end of sexual abuse through the association with a church? Right. Two people? Through the association with a church. Now, it would be very, very easy, wouldn't it, then to go and blame God for that? Wouldn't it? Don't you think? And wouldn't it be very, very easy to blame God for all the way the churches believe? You know, what they, all their belief systems that they dumped upon us. Yeah? Wouldn't it be easy to blame God for that too? But did God create any of them? No. Look at what God did create and ask yourself, is there any badness in what God did create? Herself. What are actually her creations? And the answer to that question, every time you examine it, will be no. There is no badness in anything God has ever done. And that being the case... The truth is that any badness that comes about or is created in the universe is created because mankind took this gift of free will and then decided to use it in a manner that's disharmonious with divine love. And every single pain that you are going to have to experience to release, that you're going to have to go through at some point, all came about because somebody else in, before you even came onto this planet, decided that they wanted to go about this process without God. And every single pain in your children came about because you wanted to do the same, go about this process without God. Does that make sense? And what we're trying to do now is reverse all of that, obviously. We're trying to come to know what God is and what God has and what God loves and, and all those things. And in the process, when we do that, we'll come to see that actually there is a huge separation between what God has created and what mankind has created. And we need to place the responsibility on the creator of each thing. So when I look at a plant, who created this plant? God created this plant. I can place the responsibility for the creation of this plant on God. I also know this plant responds to me emotionally. So I can also partially look at its condition and think about, oh, okay, what emotion do I have that is a partly responsible for this plant? But when I go to this other thing and I see, oh, yeah, there's a pile of rubbish there. You know, there's a heap of plastic and crap and it's just all smelly and it's not degrading and it's taking hundreds of years to decompose. God created that too, did she? No. God created the potentiality of that only by giving mankind free will to do, to do things disharmonious with God's laws and love. And then, of course, that is the potential. But God created the ability for man to choose to do what he wants, whether it's harmonious or not harmonious with love. So, so that particular thing, who created that? Who created that pile of rubbish there? Oh, that was me. That's right, I went down the shop and I bought, I, through my demand, I bought my can of Coke or my bottle of, uh, plastic bottle of Coke and when I finished the Coke, I just threw the thing there and it's got to go somewhere. <laughs> somewhere on this planet it's got to go and, and, you know, it's not like we're living in South Australia where I get a five, five cent deposit for it. Um, so, you know, it's useless to me now. It doesn't give me any money. It doesn't give me anything and, you know, it degrades after a while and cracks and if it's in the sun for a while, it just degrades completely. Um, but, but it still sits there for many, many years, maybe tens or hundreds of years. And what about that uranium cake there that's this there? Yeah, that, that stays there for a few thousand years, actually. Um, and who got that out of the earth? Who was that that got that? Again, that was a man making a choice or a decision, wasn't it? And, and you see, that's not God either. God didn't create that. God created the potentiality of that, of course, by giving us free will. Does that make sense?